Well, welcome to this session. And I thought I would talk a little bit about joy um, at this Christmas time. It's uh, a word that you see everywhere. Christmas joy, festive joy, etc. Um, and uh, sometimes I, f I feel that we lose the essence of what joy uh, sometimes means. And it's a very important state in terms of um, human living. We are pack mammals. We are creatures who really need the connection, the cohesion of feeling that we're in the tribe, in, in a social environment. And we have very much rewarded in our nervous systems from getting that, having that sense of safety that comes from being uh, understood, seen, supported by our tribe, our, our, um, our, you know, our gathered group. And when we feel that sense of joy, it's very much about several things. So one of them is the release of the anti-stress hormone DHEA. So that uh, opposes uh, the stress hormone cortisol. So actually having joy is really good for alleviating the negative effects of stress, of helping us to come down the other side of that, those heightened responses or those, that tendency to go into hypervigilance, to worry, to ruminate. If we can have an easeful sense and a, a simple kind of laughing and joy and openness, then it actually has a real biochemical effect on it. And I do this, uh, you know, I often test clients um, in an, an adrenal stress profile where we test through the saliva levels of cortisol and DHEA. And often when you see people who've either got very high levels of cortisol, they're still in that very heightened um, self-protective place. Or they're in quite low levels where things have become depleted. And it can be that, you know, their cycles throughout the day are some high, some low. Um what I mostly look at in terms of their results is their DHEA. So, yes, I'm looking at kind of how, you know, what, what their stress hormones are doing. But for me, one of the most important things is that DHEA, where, what is happening in terms of the anti-stress hormone and the buffer and their ability to cope. And if that's low, then actually what it means is our bounce back, our resilience, our adaptability, our ability to come back from times of stress can be really compromised. And if it is low, then um, it's finding the joy that helps bring that back. So we often work on this with clients. How do we find the joy? Um, and it might be things like you know laughing, um, being in social scenarios that really do make you feel safe, not ones that you know you feel socially awkward or in inhibited or uh, even confused or checked out of, but ones that are easy for you to, to feel part of. So with friends that you trust, uh, family members that you feel unconditional love with, with pets, with animals, um, comedies. Um, and with Christmas, that, that then means this whole not feeling that we have to just do things for the sake of them, that this joy with a capital J is what's expected of us. So, you know, we should be having all the presents. We should be having a good time all the time. We should be enjoying all the Christmas music. Um, I mean, I, for one, um, get very upset by the huge consumerism that's around now. Um, the amount of stuff. And if I go to the shops, the amount of stuff that people are buying, which will probably end in landfill. That I find that not joyous at all. In fact, quite the opposite. I find it deeply upsetting and, and verging on the depressing. Um, but when I and then go to things like, you know, a carol concert or, you know, I've made some decorations with my daughter. I've gone to her Christmas fair where lots of people have made things themselves or um, craft sessions where people are making decorations and presents for each other or, um, things are much more felt, simple, hands on. They don't involve, you know, just buying stuff that people don't necessarily want. You know, I, I really, really love finding the right present for the right person. And I got one present for someone this year, which I bought in a charity shop and it cost me three pounds. But 
I know that when that person it's for, who may be watching, uh, gets this present, they are going to be over the moon. And that's three pounds worth of joy, which, quite frankly, if I'd spent 50 quid on something they didn't really want, then that level of joy would be different. So, you know, we, we, we've often got things skewed in terms of what actually val value actually means. And I really think that it's, um, you know, it's things like going for, for walks with people. It's, it's one of my favourite things is to go for a walk with a friend. And I have not done it enough. There's been many talk, much talk of it and promises of doing it in this year and next year. That's the thing that definitely needs to happen um, and will bring me lots of joy. And that's the same thing that, you know, also I'm over this festive period, make sure that I have that that times where I go out and I just walk and I get into countryside and maybe there's a pub with a, ro ro you know, a fire and and uh, maybe a, a mulled wine and maybe a mince pie and that kind of stuff. But, you know, the stuff that really is the stuff of joy. And I think it's so easy to get caught up in the stuff that uh, either seems like it's very heightened. So it's these experiences that are big, that it might cost money, that uh, are flashy um, or... It's the kind of, again, the accumulation of stuff, the more sugar, the more um, eating of the right things. And um, that that overwhelm and stepping away from that, the more I can step away from that overwhelm and simply feel the simple things, then that's really joyous. And what that does is it really allows us to come into what we call social orientation, um, that bit where we don't feel overwhelmed, we don't feel that we kind of check out and go into that strange kind of freeze, immobilised place, which is where you see, if you go into the shops, you see a lot of people are shopping in that tone. They're just kind of like, I've got to get this for thingy, um, particularly as you get close to the, the, the you know, nearer to Christmas. There's that panic buying that is really not present. Um or connected in why you're doing this. Why are you buying these things for these people? Why? Um, is it because you want them to feel joy, that empathic joy? Um, or is it because you have to do it and it's on a tick list? And I think it's really important to step back and get a sense of um, perspective and uh, uh, just you know remember what gives other people joy as well. Um, and I really you know, wish for all of us this year, um, particularly things seem to have got very kind of intense and people feel maybe less safe about stuff that's going on kind of politically, socially. Uh, the more that we can really connect with people um, and the, we can really drop back away from spending money that we don't feel we have, um, anything that, that puts us further over into a sense of fear or a sense of not feeling safe does not uh, feed into any sense of joy over the Christmas period. So it might be about having conversations with people and saying, look, can we both, you know, can we check out of this? Can we say maybe we spend five pounds on each other or, you know, we make some stuff or we just have a good time together? Um, sometimes that joy can be really found in, in the talking and the coming just a sense of meeting people and understanding the needs that we both have at this time and the agreement to give ourselves, let ourselves off the hook, give ourselves a lovely time. So I hope that has uh, helped you in the joy stakes um, and that you can find the stuff that makes you laugh and, and you enjoy it, that word joy in, in, in the word enjoyment um, and the coming together and and hopefully making this festive time um, more easeful, comfortable, happy for those who really need it. So Merry Christmas and I certainly do wish you joy. Goodbye.